Hey guys, what's good? Today's video is going to be a bit more abstract and general than usual, in that much like the 3D printed bouncy ball project I did a while back, it's going to be less of a finished, repeatable project and more of my process and findings when working. As for what the project itself is, this is Jessen's orthogonal icosahedron, a 3D shape that has a whole bunch of interesting mathematical and physical properties. Today, I'm going to replicate it. I'm going to start off by going through the prior research I did on the subject, followed by the design, 3D printing, and prototyping of the shape. So, some background on Jessen's icosahedron. It's a concave, 20-sided polyhedra that was originally discovered by mathematician Borge Jessens in 1967 and has many remarkable features, as noted in the original research paper. All the sides are orthogonal, meaning all the faces are perpendicular to the adjacent faces. Other properties include how it can be cut apart and rearranged into a cube, how certain faces can be connected together to form internal polyhedra, and how it is considered a multi-stable polyhedra. More on that last one in a minute. If we are to recreate this shape, however, we must first find the net and the dihedral angle. Since the shape is orthogonal, the dihedral angle is 90 degrees. In this other paper, I was able to find a diagram that pictured the net of the shape. From this, we can figure out the dimensions for our design. So this is the image we have of the net. We can see that it is made up of two shapes, an equilateral triangle and an isosceles triangle. The isosceles triangles pair up to form rhombuses. We can see that this perpendicular bisector is also the radius of the triangle and is also equal to half the shorter diagonal of the rhombus. We can split up the rhombus into four right triangles, and since we know that the hypotenuse of said right triangle is equal to the side length of the equilateral triangle, we can use Pythagorean theorem to figure out the other length. Then we can use sine to figure out the angles, and boom, we have all our dimensions and can now start designing. So now that we've planned out all the math and geometry around it, what we should start off by doing is replicating the three triangles that we just drew out. So we'll start with the equilateral one by using the polygon tool. Let's say the radius doesn't matter as we can always scale these things later. So we're, I'm just gonna set it to 15 and we're gonna set the sides to three as it's a triangle. So now that we have the first triangle set, we can take our measuring tool and find the side length. So we see that it's 25.981 millimeters. With that noted, we can use our polyline tool. We can select one of the corners of the triangle, draw out a line and set it to that length. We're gonna set the angle of the line to double the angle A that we found earlier. So that comes out to 70.5 and hit enter. Then we can draw out another line. This one is, is uh, parallel to the base of the triangle, so we don't need to set an angle and we can just set the length. The next one we can just draw right back to the triangle and then we can finish that off by drawing a line through it in that direction in that direction. So now we have the shape that we drew out on the whiteboard and from here what we can do is extrude up the different parts so we have 3D shapes to, uh, to work with and to build with. The thickness here doesn't matter as there won't be any internal geometry, so we can just uh, keep it at something arbitrary like 5. With all the shapes extruded, we can then delete the faces underneath, just like that. 
So now with these three shapes, we're gonna pretty much use the same process we used in my dodecahedron video and my foldable shapes video. So we can copy and paste two of them because the isosceles triangles are the same. Drag them out somewhere easy to find and copy and paste them a few times. After that, we're gonna use the snap tool to lay out the entire net of the icosahedron. Once they're all separated, we can start folding up the shape. You're probably gonna to wanna to fold it up around the central triangle, the equilateral one we started with. So just select every other face and use the move tool and rotate it at 90 degrees. At this point, you can just continue folding up the entire shape. However, one notable thing to remember is that the isosceles triangles that share a base with each other will always fold inwards in that when the final shape is made, those two faces will form a concave part of the shape. Now, if you folded it right, you'll probably see something like this and you can start to see this shape taking form. What you're gonna wanna do now is merge all the parts together. So just go around, select all the faces with the merge tool and start grouping them together. After they're all grouped together, you may notice that there are these kind of notches everywhere. And that's because since it's a concave shape and we folded it up in parts that had thickness, um, there are little bits that jut out here and there. Now, before we can actually get rid of those, we need to address a bigger problem, which is the structure inside of the shape. So, if you turn, if you make the material transparent, you may see that it's a bit of a mess on the inside, but we can take care of that. We just need to go inside it by zooming and get, get to a point where we can see a few faces. And from here, we can just start clicking and deleting them. You really don't need to be too careful with this as Basically, we're getting rid of all the internal faces and it doesn't really matter in what order you do that. Now, after deleting the internal faces, you should have a fully solid shape. And it's at this point that we can delete the points that kind of jut off. So just go around, select some of the faces on those points, delete them, and they should just clear right away. After doing that, you should have a fully complete and perfect Jessen's icosahedron to do whatever you like with. Now that we have a finished design, we can print it out. Having a physical, tangible model like this helps tremendously for thinking about such a shape. If we print a hollow version by setting the infill on the print to zero and making it in a flexible filament, we can see how Jessen's icosahedron is multi-stable, as when it is compressed, it folds into an octahedron, just as this simulation I found suggested. This property is very interesting, as when the shape collapses, it dramatically decreases in surface area, going from a 20-sided shape to an 8-sided shape. Additionally, when compressed in just one direction, it compresses in all directions, making this structure auxetic. I've played with auxetic structures before. However, I've only been able to create structures that are auxetic in two axes, while this shape is auxetic in three.
This leads into the possible applications of such a geometry. My first idea was medicine, as variable surface area is a property valued for applications like drug delivery, and medical devices such as stents benefit from uniform expansion. Let me know in the comments if you have any ideas on this topic. Anyways, if this video made any sense, I hope you walk away having learned at least something, whether it be doing research on a project before you start prototyping, or design techniques, or just the fact that this cool little shape exists. If you did learn any of those things or anything else, please leave a like and talk to me about it in the comments. I'll have a link to the Thingiverse page and all other resources seen in this video in the description. If you want to see more videos like this, then subscribe. I'll catch you later. XYZ Aiden, out.